Hallelujah. Somebody shout Jesus up in here. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Before I do get started, I want to give honor to my wife. Hallelujah. Putting up with me as long as you have. And iron sharpens iron. Come on, somebody. Had a man of God correct me down the road. He didn't even know. You ever been corrected? He didn't know you was getting corrected. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was in there with a man of God, and he began to preach. And Randall, you was with me, and he began to give honor. And the first thing he did was give honor to his, to his king. And the next thing he did, Joshua, give honor to his wife. And I thought to myself, when's the last time you, I ain't never did that. So that was my first time. Hey, I'm growing. Hey, hallelujah. Come on. <laughs> hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and tell him it's time. Come on, somebody. It's time. Look at your other neighbor and tell him in case you didn't know. It's time. <laughs> it is time. If you got your Bibles, go ahead and open up to Ecclesiastics. Hallelujah. Chapter 3. It is time. Hallelujah. Father, have your way in this place. Move all over this place, Lord. Don't let anybody leave the same way that they come in. Father, somebody needs to hear these words. They're almost there. The time is approaching. And God knows the hour. Use us, Lord, how you see fit. It's in the name of our King. Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ecclesiastic chapter three, while you're turning there, I wanna share some good news of Jesus, hallelujah. My brother Randall, wave your hand over there, brother, I'm gonna put you on blast, hallelujah. I need more men like that, I need you to hear me. Raise your hand again, Randall, he's like, what is that preacher doing? I need more like him. They say it's not about me, it's not about what I'm doing, but it's about what God's doing. He took his own finances. I ain't telling what you right did with your left, but the Lord said when somebody else does it, it is okay. Because you didn't do it. Hallelujah. We got Nick Greathouse in the house. Somebody shout Jesus. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Brother Randall yesterday went and he planned this event for six months. And I said, Randall, what are you doing? And Randall said, I'm giving back to the king that gave to me. I want to do what Jesus did for me because he sent people in my path that changed my direction. So what this man of God did is he went and done his own event. He didn't put flowers all over the place and, and invite the whole world. It wasn't for the world. He said, I want the least of them. I don't want the one that's on the street corner that don't know how to get ahead. I want the prostitute that don't know how to, that, that don't know her worth. I want the drug addict that don't know how to get free. I want the mom and daddy that stands at the, at the divorce court and is about to lose everything. I want them to understand. If they get a hold of Jesus, it changed me, it changed my wife, and my God, it can change them. We went to this event yesterday. Brother Nick drove down from Indiana. Y'all know that boy would drive through snow. He'll drive anywhere for a soul. I watched him come through blizzards his first day here. And I said, Nick, why in the world would you drive 13 hours? He said, I just want to see one get saved, preacher. I when is the last time your hearts felt that? When's the last time your heart felt? I want to see somebody changed. I want to see somebody's life put back together. I want somebody to get a hold of this Jesus that got a hold of me. I know Jesus is wonderful and I know he's great and I know there's times we don't want to share him. But he's big enough to share. He's big enough to be at your house and your house too, Georgia. He's able to be at your house, John, when he's at my house. He's that kind of God. I watch these men of God put their self last. Him, Jeremy, Lester, and, and, and all of these men, Gerard, all of them went out and gave them Jesus. On a Saturday, we make plans to go here, to go there. And he's got a home in Indiana. I'm sure there's some things he could be doing. But he says, what I care about is I want to see somebody saved. He caught a vision. He caught the feeling. 
He caught the emotions. He caught everything that God had stored in Randall because God done a stirring. I think that's what's wrong with the church. I believe the church has this. Imagine, if you will, a big five gallon or 50, 100 gallon, whatever, of water. And my brother, if I woke up and I dropped some Jesus powder in it. How many of you know about Kool-Aid? Y'all didn't come from the hood where I come from. Y'all don't know nothing about Kool-Aid. But this is for somebody. I know when I used to get a gallon of Kool-Aid, I would take the water around it and I'd drop the red in the water. And turn it would make like these red streaks that would go through the water. But the water would never turn completely red. Until, until a spoon got stuck in. <laughs> until a Jesus got put in and did a stirring. <laughs> I came to tell somebody, the Lord wants to stir you. He wants to pull your gifts forward. He wants to use you for the kingdom of heaven. He's trying to use you. The question is, will you let him stir you up? Will you let him stir you up? Come on, somebody. Look at your neighbor and tell him it's time. It's time. God's word reads, chapter 3. To everything, to everything, to everything there is a season. A time for every purpose under heaven. He said there's a time for everything. I'm just going to jump down through here. It says a time to born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to re refrain, a time to lose and a time to keep, a time to throw away and a time to tear, a time to keep silent and a time to keep speaking. I'm just speaking, going through some of these. A time to speak. And a time to keep silence. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war. And a time of peace. I know a lot of times we as Christians. And I just want somebody to hear me. We try to fit God in our timing. We remind God that he's running late. We remind him that I got about three more days. We remind God all the time about time. Lord, if you don't move this time, nothing will work. God, if you don't save them, nobody can. Newsflash, he knows that. But understand this, Christians. The time that we live on, we're under time. He's outside of time. The time that you are under, I learned this in prison. Help me. He said, preacher man, you can either learn how to do the time or let the time do you. I've come to find out in the real world, but when y'all don't know that language, I'm going to teach you this language that you do understand. The time that you're under steals your joy. The time that you have stresses you out. The time that you sit up under casts worries upon you. The time clock pushes pressure on you because you think that you're running behind. And father of time, the one that made the clock, said, I gave you borrowed time. And I want to use you just like I used that young man to go out into the byways, the highways, and the hedges. Five men gave their life to Jesus yesterday. Two of them rededicated. One of them was a 15-year-old child. Praise God. And he said, Preacher, how's Jesus going to fix this? You tell me I'm supposed to walk with him, but I don't know how to walk with him. I prayed when I was 12. But nobody told me about a walk like this. He said, in fact, I was wondering where God was the other day because I was with my uncle. The next week I didn't see him no more because he went to go do a drug deal. 
and it turned south and they killed my uncle how do you walk with him preacher I said that sometimes when you first start walking with God it can be the hardest walk you ever walked because all you've ever known is wrong but when you start walking with God and God says just put your feet in my feet put it right here and walk you ever heard the story of where the man one time was drinking and he stayed drunk all the time and he'd get up every morning before his family left around and he would sneak to the bar to go get him a drink then in the evening time he would come back and he knew that his kids would be up and they were waiting on him to get there from work his wife wanted to see him but brother there was something inside that was torn Jeff there was something that it wasn't made whole and he was looking for something that would fill the void so the man would walk to that bar every single day and he'd take him a couple of drinks so he could his nerves could calm down Holly and he could go home with his family and one day the man was walking and he heard something behind him and he looked and he seen his own child following him he was following daddy to go get a sneak drink and when he got right there at the door he heard that child and he turned around and said what are you doing he said look daddy I'm following your steps look daddy I'm following you the man turned around and thought to himself where am I leading you child and he stopped and he said Lord I'm leading them to hell I don't know how to change me to change them put me on a different path Lord I don't know the way it takes surrenderance it takes saying I don't know it all you're the one that wrote the beginning and the end you are the truth and the light help me are we gotten so far that we forget how to ask for help I can't walk without him holding my hand I can't talk unless he leads my words God began to speak to me and show me things he said son it's time I sent a man of God to you in Texas and he brought you a clock and he had a message from me and I knew it was you Randall when he said it Randall walked up to me in Texas and he gave me a watch and he said the Lord said it's time and I've shared with some of you and I said time for what Randall said I don't know preacher that's between you and the Lord he just told me to tell you it's time so I began to dig and I began to dig and try to find time for what and God began to show me it's the time for the changing of the seasons I got new things coming there may be a war around you son but I got time for everything see our problem church y'all can be seated our problem church is we want things on our time I got news for you God's watch it's not like mine and yours see honey we see minutes and we see hours we see days we see weeks Jesus sees seasons he don't do things in your timing he does things in seasons see we thought it was on a time clock God's watch is different than yours. What is it, a couple months per season? Our problem is as soon as we enter a season that we do not like, sick of the winter, I'm ready for the summer. About tired of being hot, Nick, I'm ready to have some good fall weather. What's wrong with God's people? We ain't never happy. We want it sunny and 70 all the time. And God's saying, but there is a time that you're going to go through, through things that you will not like. He said, there'll be a time to cry. There'll be a time that I tear you down. They don't want to preach this. There'll be a time that I break you in half. There'll be a time when you can't even feel me. There'll be a time when you pray and you wonder if I even hear you. There'll be a time, sir. And some of you are in times such as this. And you're asking, when is my time? God, don't 
you know I'm still here? Do you even hear me? And we pray and we ask Jesus and we say, I don't have the time you have. I'm so far behind God that I can't catch up. I came out of prison at 32 years old without a pot to pee in or a window to throw it out of. Never had a home. Never had nothing. All I found was I lost everything, but I found everything. When I took God's hand, I need you to hear me before we get into this. He showed me time listens to me. Time listens to me. Do you know God can preserve you? God preserved some of us and put us in prison because we was killing ourselves. Some of you, he's preserved you by sending you a good woman to keep your hard-headed butt straight. He's preserved you. If you got one of them women beside you, you need to say, thank you, Jesus. Mm. God showed me here, he said, that there's a, there's a time and a purpose for everything, every season. And many of us think that there's a thing called coincidence. Being in the right place, the right time, doing the right thing, getting the right things come to you, that's all hogwash. But I don't want to give it to you and say, well, pastor just said that. I want you to hear my daddy said that. I want to show you that my daddy shows you that I have a divine appointment for you. Prove it, pastor. I'm glad you asked. It's in Genesis 15. It says it right here. Then God told Abraham, No certainly that your descendants will be strangers in the land that is not theirs. Listen, I will serve, and they will serve them. Not him, they will serve them. The Egyptians is who he's talking about. They will serve them, and they will be afflicted for 400 years. Hold up. He said, I have got a divine appointment. After 400 years, not a minute more, not a minute late. I said it won't happen next week, but on the 400th year, you can bet your finny thin fin that I'm going to show up and I'm yeah. going to break them out. I'm going to break the strongholds down. I'm going to open up the Red Sea. I'm going to take them across. They will no longer be Egyptian slaves, but they will be Hebrew children. I'm on the way. I got a divine appointment. Look at your neighbor and tell them my time is here. See, the Lord says you receive not because you ask not. Some of you need to learn to speak things. Some of you need to say... The season I've been in, devil, I've had enough of it. The Lord's on his way. I'm coming out today. If I got to cross the Red Sea, if he's got to break down chains, if he's got to open prison doors, he's coming to get me. Come on, somebody. Not a minute past 400 years. I stopped by here to tell you there is an appointed time for you. Mm. The worst thing you could ever do is get to an appointment and not be ready. I've seen people show up at jobs. They apply, but they ain't ready. I wanted the paycheck. <laughs> but I didn't want all of that. Come on, somebody. I said, the Lord has an appointed time. Somebody shout Jesus in this church. I want to show you where I want to be found. I want to show you where I want to be found when he comes. Can I show you that? Yeah. I want to show you that when the Lord comes and he said, now the appointed time is here. Because some of you may miss this. So I want to break this down before I go any closer. There is a time and God's time is what? Seasonal. It's not your way right away, Burger King now. He's a seasonal kind of God. Yeah. Read him. He works things for your good. And sometimes it takes seasons to fix it. It's not a magic mic that I can just wipe on you and wipe it off and you're fixed and healed. God said we got to go through some things. 
I got to break some stuff off of you. I got to take some of you off of you and put some of me on you. Come on, somebody. I said, he's a good God. Did anybody know his name in this church? He said, it's time for me to move forward with you, and I have a divine appointment with you. He said, I have a future, and I have hope. He told Jeremiah, I got plans for you. If he's got plans for me, then Joseph, he has direction for me. And Brittany, if he's got directions for me, he has divine appointments for me. He's got a place, Jeremy, that I need to be standing at ready when the bridegroom comes. Because some of them said they were ready, but they didn't have the oil in their lamp. But the ones with the oil said, you on your own today. I got mine. You should have got yours. Come on, somebody. What I got, I can't give to you. The anointing ain't cheap. Somebody knows what I'm talking about in this place. The problem is, if you're not ready and following the Lord and walking in his footsteps... When he gets you to the divine appointment. Brittany, now you got to watch it. The clock is going to strike right here in a minute, Nick. And when I do that, the Lord knows I'm going to break you free. (laughs) The chains are about to fall off of you. Jason, you no longer have to wake up with Roxy Cottons no more. But I need you to stand right here. If you're in this place... With me. You can't be there by yourself. If you're in the same place. With me. When the divine appointment comes. When the appointed time comes. When the season's up. Then I can move you into your direction. Now watch. What happens when we get there. And we're not ready. I'll give you two indications. One, the virgins told the other ones, he's here. I can't help you're not ready. You were playing church. But I am the church. He lives within me. And I've been waiting on him to come. No, I can't share it. I've been waiting on him too long. He's my bride. He's my groom. He's the one that never left me when everybody else left me. When they turned on me, he's the only one that took me in. When y'all threw me out, he was the one. I can't share this old. And he told the other ones, at this time, watch, you need to go back. Some of you, God has been trying to take to the other level. But every time he gets you to the door, you come halfway, you got a little church praise on you. We know how to do church. God ain't interested in how you can sing, blab, and I drop you and lay you on your head. He ain't worried worried about that. What he's worried about is in here. Is it ready? He said, you can get fancy buildings and Jesus not be there. You can have this and look churchy and I not even live in it. Are you ready? The ones that were ready, the Lord said, come. The ones that weren't ready, he said, go back. Maybe you'll catch it next season. Mm. Not next time. See, we live on time. I need you to understand this. We say, next time I'm going to do better. Next time will be different. Next time I will make it. I will make it work if I got to give it. Next time. And the Lord is saying, well, I hope you're ready next season. Do you see how important it is to be ready? Because you may not be where you need to be when God wants you to be. And he'd turn around and say, well now, go back down here. Let me pluck some more out of you. Let me cut some more out of you. So when you get here, you'll say, now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time that I get broke free. Now is the divine appointment that God has for me. Now is the time that I get my family. Now is the time that I get my husband. Yeah. Now is the time I start my ministry. Now is the time, Lord. The Lord said, today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. You ain't promised it. When God comes back, I want him to catch me just like this. Listen, don't miss it. So he departed from there and he found Elijah. Elijah. The son of Shaphat, who was plowing. Let me just stop. 
when the man of God had an encounter with the man of God that the Lord has sent. The Lord had sent a man of God to a man of God. The problem is God is sending men and women of God in your way, but you think you got it all that in a box of chocolates. You don't need to follow leadership and you got all that. Go ahead and wander around the desert. Because God sends people in your life to direct you. He sent Moses. He sent King David. He sent Aaron. He sent them all. He made man so he can use them. Stay with me. He was plowing. Praise God, I know this. Let's just do it. The man of God shows up at the divine appointment. Elijah's in the field. He's plowing. I'm doing what? I, I'm thankful for what God has given me. Watch. And I'm taking care of what God has given me. It ain't much, but it's what God gave me. And I'm going to treat it with the best intentions that I got in me. And I'm going to get every wheat tear out of here because God is bringing a harvest. I'm in control of this harvest. And I am plowing for the Lord. And he's just the plowing. Watch him. He's plowing. And when you get to working so much for God, you forget even where you're going. I love you, Nick. He's leaving. I love y'all. I love you, brother. He's got to get back to Indiana. Hallelujah. Stay with me. We're going down here, and I'm working in the field. I'm doing what God has told me to do. I'm taking care of the blessings that God has given me. Some of us ain't even taking care of the blessings that God gives us. If you're not praying with your children, if you're not praying with your wife, if you're not washing her, and, and, you're, and if the wife, I ain't going to let you out that easy. If you're not the helper that you're supposed to be, a helper, not a nagger, a helper. I help him out of a situation, not condemn him from a situation, but to help him in any situation. You understand? And the Lord's saying, I have works for you. And when he came back and he found the man of God, he was plowing up the field. Can you see the man of God coming in behind him? It's like walking in on one of your children praying. If you've ever walked in, I, watch, I walk in on Brinkley all the time praying and anointing herself with oil. And I think to myself, brother, all the wrongs I did in my stupid life, thank you, Lord, that I was able to do something right. And I watch that little baby in there praying, and I can only imagine the man of God coming in behind him going, right where he needed to be. Plowing up the field. Now watch how God works. He come walking by. See, God ain't got time to be stopping all the time. There's people dying and going to hell. Some of us are playing kumbaya, meeting buildings, and that's the only place we ever go, and the church is dying outside. But we just waiting on them to come in here. Hallelujah. Keep waiting. I'm going out. Anyway, uh, the man of God is standing here, and he gets behind him, and he does this with the cloak. John, and he throws it. The mantle wraps around him. The man of God just looks at him. I got work to do. You coming with me or you going to stay back here? You going to make excuses? Are you coming with me? The man of God did this. He knew the hour was come. He knew the time had came. And he said, I got to seize the moment. He jumps up. He chased the man of God down. He said, I got to tell mom and daddy that I love them. And I got to take care of some things before I follow you. Watch. I'm on my way. I just don't want nothing to hinder me when I get there. The man of God went back and he took his plow. That is livelihood. That's how he makes his money. That's how he feeds his children. That's how he puts groceries in the, in the refrigerator. And he turns around and he burns it to the ground. He said, who I used to be don't fit in who I'm going to be. Come on, somebody. It's a new season. It's a new time. It's a new place. And I got to get in order with God. Burn it to the ground. The new things that God got for me, the past ain't got nothing for me. I want what God's got. Come on, somebody. Shout, I want what God's got. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, Hallelujah. Number one, I want to give you this. Number one, if you're ready, you ain't got to get ready. Number one, if you're ready, you ain't got to get ready. So stay ready. Number two, when you're truly ready, nothing to hold you back. 
when you're truly ready to surrender, nothing will hold you back. Can I just talk to somebody for a minute? I might make some of you mad, but that's okay. I didn't come to please you. I came to please God. <laughs> God had to put me in a place and said, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Ready. The Lord said, all that you got with you got to burn down. Drugs don't come in here, son. I burned that one down. You can no longer look at pornography. I can't even talk to somebody. Hallelujah. Burn that down too. Son, if I'm going to use you, lose that attitude. You don't look like me. You look like you've been sucking on sour lemons talking about I love Jesus. You're scaring people from me. Burn it down. God is wanting to do something in some of you right now. He's got to burn down some unforgiveness in you because you're holding on something when you was 15 years old. Yeah. Let it go. Let God have it. Get rid of it. Whatever's hindering you from being where God needs you to be. I don't know about you, but I don't want you to wander for 40 years in a desert. And get all the way up there and say, I had a divine appointment. It's today. And the Lord said, yeah, we're going to cross the Red Sea. But you still got junk on, you turn back around. What sucks is when you're, jo- when, when, what really sucks, can I just be honest? It's when you're Caleb or you're Joshua. And I'm standing at the promised land, but everything connected to me ain't ready. But I'm ready. Some of you are stopping yourself from going where God wants to take you because what you're connected to can't go where God's trying to take you. So whatever it is, cut it off. God had to take me to a place and he had to get rid of Jason. He said, if you want to come with me, if you want to come to your Lord and you want to take a hold of my hand and you want me to leave you, I'm going to have to do some changes. And before I can turn you to Abraham, Abram, we're going to have to go through some seasons. I'm going to give you a new name. I'm going to give you a new purpose. I'm going to do things inside of you that no man can do. But I need you. To burn it down. I just wonder before I get ready to close in here in just a minute. How many of you need to burn something down? Some of you need attitudes burned down. Unforgiveness burnt down. Some of you need to burn down the the fact that, that you're not perfect. And it's okay. Some of you think that you just got to have it all together. Churches has got this sickness running through it. It's heartbreaking. Churches think they got to have this persona now that when we go to church, David, and when they come in, we got to have all the answers. We got to look a certain way. How are you? I'm good. I'm blessed and highly favored. Inside of you, you're crying. You remember when God was talking to Moses? I'll give you a revelation. Go back and check it out. I know Randall will eat it. I'm going to give it to you. Remember when Moses got down there and God told him, he said, quit crying. Stop crying. How long are you going to cry, Moses? If you'll go back up, there's a missing verse right there because, and I'll tell you why. He told the children of Israel, God's got us. He's going to cross it. We got it. The Lord's with us. Hallelujah. He was speaking one thing, but on the inside, God heard it. He told Moses, why are you still crying? I hear you speaking with your mouth that I'm going to get you across and that I'm going to deliver you. But why are you doubting me on the inside? Why are you crying? Hadn't I always come and got you? Have I ever left you? I'm always on time. And I think it's time for us here at this church to understand what time it is. It is time for us to take the call. Don't look at the preacher and say he's got the call on him. I'm talking to you. Randall's not behind this poop pitch yet. But it starts at home first. It starts in you to say, 
I want to give back to Jesus. Brother Nick, come on down here with me. Brother, since I still got you for a moment. I got Nick Greathouse in the house and I'm going to use him. You know why? Because he wants to be used by God. And God has shown me a long time ago, if you want to be used by God, I will make a way where there's no way. Can I tell you, this young man, as he walks down through here, some of you don't know my brother, so I'm going to break it down for you. Yeah, he's pretty right here, and he's a handsome young man, and he can sing good. But what makes his heart beat? Because there was a time when they used to put him in trash cans and cover him up with newspapers. There was a time he had no home. Mama was doing the only thing she could do trying to help. Son, I'm going to put you back. I can just see her and, I, and my heart breaks for your mama because I've been in situations I didn't want to be in. And that odds stacked against you. God said, Nick, if you'll get ready, I got time. And when you get there this time, the season will break. Things will change. The things will fall off. The old will become gone and the new will become new. Why the old wine skin can't fit in the new ones? He said, Nick, who you used to be, I can't use it. But the man that I made, he said, the one that I know, the one I put my heartbeat in, some of them may not understand you, but are you coming for them or me? Nick said, use me, God. I've tried it long enough, and my time is over. Lord, kill it. He even wrote a song. He said, the Lord had to kill me so I could live. Nick is now being used all over the United States of America, even in other countries. He's a Christian, Christian hip-hop. Y'all call it rappers or whatever you want to call it. I call it God's music. So my brother Nick is going to sing this song to you. And it's called This I Pray. And before I give him this mic, I want to pray for you. Father, I pray, Lord, today that you reach down inside of every heart that is under the sound of my voice. God, whatever's been hindering them from walking so close to you, whatever's been hindering them that needs to be cut off, that needs to be burned away so you can use them. It don't have to be a sin in your life. You can be in the appearance of sin. It don't have to be sin so much. It can be your nasty attitude. The Lord said, I want you to look like me. I want you to talk like me. I want when you walk out of the room, they said, I can tell he's been with Jesus. Today, with every heart open, I'm going to ask you all, would you stand to your feet? As the Lord is already moving in this place, I pray as Nick sings this song, this I pray, where he found himself in a dark place. And he began to pray, and prayer changed things. The young man that they used to put in trash cans to warm now goes looking in trash cans to pull them out. I just wonder what God is trying to do with you in this time. So as Nick sings this song, me and my wife, Randall, and a couple other ministers, Jeremy, Jeremy, come on down here, Pete. We're going to stand down here, Sister Irma. You're going to have ministers down here that we're going to stand here with you. And we're going to pray and declare and decree that your time is now. That everything that's held you back will be burnt down and God's plan will prevail. As Nick sings, don't wait on Nick. Don't wait on anybody. Run to the Holy Spirit.
First off, Lord, thank you for my life. I thank you for my sin that you put out of your sight. Never thought that that could happen, Father God, I'm so ashamed. Memories of what I did always rushing through my brain. It's hard to wrap my mind around how you could just forgive. Can't comprehend the fact that you would even let me live. You know all of the secrets I keep hidden in the dark. All the evil desires that keep on working in my heart. Lord, take it from me, cause I hate it that I'm ugly It's hard to talk to people, cause I know that they would judge me They probably say I need to be locked up inside a cell He's sick inside his head and he ain't never gonna get well They say that I should die and that would probably be the truth He ain't fit for society, his confession is the proof So I keep it to myself, cause I'm scared of what they'll say I reveal myself to you, cause I know you gon' make a way This I pray, this I pray If it's one thing you gon' do is make a way that you lead me to a home where I can stay That you hit me when I come to you with tears And share the pain with you I face throughout the years This I pray, I ask you to kill me and then you did You had to kill me so I could live This I pray, everything you show to me I will remember And that you love me even though I'm still a sinner These voices in my head, you hear them too They persecuting me and they persecuting you was diagnosed a paranoid schizophrenic Tried taking the medicine, now I'm doing it organic Can't completely recover, but God, I'm trusting in your plan You showed me a light and I put my life inside your hands People think I'm crazy when I tell them what I've seen Not the visions of the trances, ain't talking about the dreams I'm talking about the watchers What I seen with my eyes, the way you showed me They was connected to my mind Enlighten me, Father, I know you showed me for a reason I picked up on the pattern, seen the signs of the season and now I'm scared to death of all the souls of my people Let them think that I'm crazy And when you rescued me from evil You handed me the keys and said drive while you can I hope I don't crash Give me the strength to be a man This I pray, this I pray If it's one thing you gon' do is make a way That you lead me to a home where I can stay That you hit me when I come to you with tears And share the pain with you I face throughout the years This I pray, I ask you to kill me and then you did you had to kill me so I could live, this I pray Everything you show to me I will remember And that you love me even though I'm still a sinner I pray you reunite me with my son And my daughters don't hate me for everything that I've done Protect them from evil, Jesus, I'm begging you for this Let me tell them I'm sorry for everything that I missed Show them you can do miracles, how you healed a broken vessel Let them call out to you and help them fight against the devil I pray for my mama, she finally gave her heart to you my daddy gon' do the same thing too My sister's still struggling God, I hope you intervene Protect my grams and show them all you still the king I pray for all my friends who struggle with drug addiction Help the time me and Kelly, Father, you know I really miss them Bless Jimmy Graham, all the prayers on my behalf Help Robert with driving, God, I can't wait to see him laugh And finally, Lord, I pray you help my stinking baby I thank you for making me a special kind of crazy This I pray, this I pray If it's one thing you gon' do is make a way That you lead me to a home where I can stay That you hit me when I come to you in tears And share the pain with you I face throughout the years This I pray, I ask you to kill me and then you did You had to kill me so I could live This I pray, everything you show to me I will remember And that you love me even though I'm still Praise God. Church, I want to share something with you real quick. You know, there's a lot of places that, that I can reach. And there's a lot of places, Tiffany, that I can't reach. But God gave me a tool. He gave me something that he gave Nick. He said, share your brother's words that I have put in him. Share his music to this lost and dying world that all they listen to is gangstified and guns and killing and raping and all of this stuff he said turn them on to my music turn them into a praying people instead of complaining people church that those that know my brother Nick 
Y'all know he's, he's family to me. If Nick lay down the music tomorrow, wouldn't change nothing with me, boy. Because I love you right where you're at. My whole family loves you. Our church loves you. One thing I didn't know, I know the word of God is in Nick. I spent time with him. Matter of fact, I, he's who I call a lot of times. A Randall, one of them too, and and I and, and they and I take my sword and I stick it out, and they sharpen it. We sharpen each other. And I got to talking to Nick, and I said, "Son, you need to be preaching the gospel." He said, "Well, I said I think that you need to be in prayer of being ordained to the ministry." Nick said. Brother, I'm already ordained to the ministry. So this ain't just Nick Greathouse that you see. This is actually a, a minister of the gospel. This is a disciple of the Jesus. This is a missionary of the Lord. Come on, somebody. So I'm excited to announce to you, Nick is going to preach his first sermon here at Kingdom Church in about four weeks. Anybody want to hear Nick preach? Come on, somebody. Church, I love every one of you. And I want you to understand, looking at this stage right now, you may just see two men. I got seven felonies. I don't know how many Nick got. They quit keeping up with them. They gave up on us a long time ago. And there's times when Nick was just like me and we thought we had missed it. Our time has come and gone. God says no as a time such as this. And I believe and I know that God, that God of heaven and earth, the same God that made me. The same God that made Nick. The same God that made my brother David. The same God that made you, Joseph, made you all. Church is time. It's time to go to your neighbor's house. If you're not inviting him to church, shame on you, Holly. But what I would rather you do than go by there and knock on the door and say, come to Kingdom Church tell you what I would love to catch you doing I would love to walk up like Elijah did to Elisha and I woke up and you're at your neighbor's house saying can I just pray for you because there's a neighbor over there and a child's on drugs and they don't know how he's ever going to get off of them and you have been delivered but you're too good to walk next door women that have been beaten, abused they hold their head down they never hold their head up and the Lord said, hadn't I brought you this far? Go knock on the door. You tell them the same God that delivered you. It's the same God that brought the water out of the rock. And it's the same God that has stopped by here before I go to heaven to tell somebody he wants to use you. Will you let him use you? He's a seasonal God. Now the blood is off of my hands. So when you get there again and you stand at the gate, don't you blame Pastor Robbins. Because the Lord told me to tell you, the season is now. Get your house in order. Get your affairs in order. God wants to use you. Anybody in this church want to be used by Jesus? For the ones that didn't, I'll keep you in my prayers. Father, in the name of Jesus. In fact, Lord, I just love you. Brother Nick, I want you to close us out of here tonight. That I got you here. Close us out of prayer, man of God. Father, we just come to you right now as sinful, broken people. Every person in here, you know what's in their hearts, Father. You know what they go through, what it is that they think about, 
what it is that they struggle with. Lord, I ask right now that you just move in their hearts and that the seeds that are planted within them when they come in here, Lord, become fruitful and they grow so that others can see it, Father God, and want it. Lord, thank you for your love. Thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. Thank you, Father God, for your Son, Lord Jesus Christ, the one who saved me, Lord. I thank you so much for every person that came. Lord, I ask that you just do a mighty work in this place and in these people so that they can glorify you and that you can bless them, Father, with the blessings that you've had prepared for them before they were even born. Lord, I thank you for this trip. I thank you so much for Pastor Jason, my brother Randall, and for everything that you've done for me, Lord. I thank you for what you're going to do for these people. I thank you for the changing of hearts. I feel the changing in people's hearts right now, Lord. I know that you've touched these people today. And I just ask that you help it to turn into something wonderful for them and for you and for our kingdom. Lord God, thank you so much for your love and your mercy. I pray these things in the mighty name of my King and my Savior. Jesus Christ.